Turn in your Bible to Acts chapter 7. All right, we've been in Sunday school in Acts chapter 8, haven't we? I just have to think of that. But uh, we're going to move to another scripture after we get this one. We're going to just get a, a little jumping off place here on this. Uh, Acts chapter 7 and drop down to verse 20. And then we'll be looking at uh, Old Testament scripture there and working in over there a little bit. Well, I'm glad I'm saved today. I'm glad this kind of a uh, day that we're living in, wow, it's crazy. Uh, preacher was talking the other day on the radio about how many young people he's buried over in his cemetery. Too many. Too many. A lot of them get on drugs and something, something, substance. Remember, how alcohol's a drug, by the way, so whatever it is. And... Uh, we're bearing too many of them, a lot of them, oh, how we need to pray. How we need to, to try to pray that we'll maybe have an impact on some of these young people. I, I thought that's, this week I've been praying about it, and maybe that's a place we could start. We, we need to, we're hanging the door hangers, we're going to do the other things, but we need to try to go after some of our young people too and reach them with the gospel of Christ. Oh, how we need to reach them. Acts chapter 7 and if you'll uh, drop down there to verse 20 and reading through 22. In which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Father, would you help us to realize, Lord, it's not just our, it's, it's all you. You said without you, we could do nothing. And Lord, that's, that's a fact. And Moses found it out, and we found it out. So Lord, I pray that you'll help us get our mind on you this morning, our eyes on you, uh, as we talked about in Sunday school and even now. Uh, oh, how the scriptures are true. Without you, we can do nothing. So please come in power, come in great power to our little church. Don't leave us where we're at, Lord. Don't let us be satisfied with less than what you have for each one of us. Oh, God, you've got so much more than where we're at. Please, please, give us power. Get, us eyes, get our eyes on you and off the work, off the ministry, off the church, off everything else. But it's you and you alone that can help us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, the title of the message is, Any Old Bush Will Do. <laughs> Any Old Bush Will Do. Acts 7, verse 20 to 22. But I want us to turn back and, uh, to Exodus, second book in the Bible. Exodus chapter 2, if you will. And we're going to spend a little time over there talking about Moses. Wonderful man, wonderful man of God. Lived 120 years, and they said his eye is not dim. We were talking about glasses a while ago. Somebody, I'm telling you, 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 you can't beat that. He could still see his strength had not abated. And I personally think that was one of the reasons for that is because he spent so much time with God. If you remember, he went to the mount, was on the mount getting the Ten Commandments. And he was up there for 40 days. Can you imagine being in the presence of God for four days? I mean, literally now. I mean, we, we're all in the presence. He's here. And then the Bible says he went back up. Remember, he came down and broke him commandments. <laughs> he got mad at him. <laughs> went back up for 40 more days. And then the Bible says a strange thing. It said he went back up for 40 more days. That's 120 days. That's how many years old he was, 120 years. And his life is divided up in three segments of 40s. It is. It's, if you look at that, we'll talk about that in a minute. But all my friend, I believe getting the presence of God in your life and having, I mean, really in real. Now, we know he's here and we know he lives in our hearts when we're saved and so on. But a lot of times we're just not where we ought to be. And, and over 400 years before God had told Abraham that he was going to raise up a deliverer for his people. And to save him from that old new Pharaoh that the Bible says knew not Joseph, if you remember the scripture. And now God's time had come. 
and uh, God's divine providence had saved Moses. Think about him. They, they hid him for three months, but after a while, you can't, you can't just keep hiding a child, you know. He's going to be found out sooner or later. They put him in a little ark, an ark of safety. Well, I'm glad I'm in the ark of safety, the ark of the covenant. But he put him in, put him in the water, just floated him down the river. Pharaoh's daughter found him. Just happened that way, huh? Yeah. Yeah, God ordered all of that. And uh, time had come, and Moses had been trained. Man, he was a, a warrior. He was a soldier. Uh, he was a statesman. He was an administrator. He knew everything they knew. And by the way, that, at that time, Egypt was very brilliant. You know that they have embalmed people and put people that they can't figure out how to do it to this day. It's amazing things that they did. Moses knew all of that stuff. He learned it all. He was trained. And uh, by the age of 40, this is his first, he's 40 years old now. He's been trained. He's a statesman, a scholarly, polished man. He seems to be on the threshold of a brilliant career. And the fact is, he's just a few hours away from making himself useless to God for 40 years. <laughs> And I'm afraid that's where some of us are today. We're going to make ourselves useless to God for a long time to come. Oh, my friends. He stayed in the backside. You remember he killed this man? And, and, and in fact, let's just look at it. He, he, Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. If you'll turn there with me. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, and he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. Now, he obviously knew what he was, and he knew who he was, and he didn't look like the Egyptians, but uh, the, he was still uh, mama's, you know, Pharaoh's daughter there. She would take care of him. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And uh, when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, one of them was jumping on another, apparently, with no reason, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. And of course we know the, the story from there. Oh, my friend, Moses thought he'd be accepted in the ministry. God had called him. God had ordained that he'd do that. He knew that. He had a strong sense of mission. But the fact of the matter is he had no power. And I keep telling our people that come over here on Saturday, and I keep telling others, and I keep telling anybody to listen to me, we have no power. I don't care if your church is running, and some of these churches are running wide open, got 200 people and more, and, and got a good uh, group coming, and seem like you got a lot of things going for them. They still have no power. They don't have Holy Ghost power. They don't have power like they had in the book of Acts. I'll tell you that. None of us do. And Moses didn't have any power either. It's going to cost him. Uh, he, had a, he had a sense of a need. Uh, he knew there was a need. He knew his brethren were, were being abused and being beaten. And, and many of them being killed and murdered, no doubt. Just, just old slave who cared about them. He had a strong sense of mission, but he had no power. He had genuine compassion. He really did. He was sincere. Have you ever, have you ever been sincere about something? Still, not be wrong. You can still be wrong. Oh, my friend. He, he, he had a false sense of dedication, even. He committed himself to the work instead of God. And we don't need to commit ourselves to the work or to the church. Now, we do want to build up the church because it's God's work and we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And we're to do that. We're to build the kingdom of God. And we're, to, we're to do that, certainly. But we're not to put that first. Uh, it's not the work. It's not the church. It's not the mission. It's not the project. It's not. No, it's God Almighty. We better remember that. And until Moses learned that, he's going to be on the backside of the desert and he let that knock him off balance, and, and he committed himself to the work instead of God. He didn't look up. You need to look up.
Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's who we need to look to, looking unto Jesus. We better keep our eyes on him. Often we are man conscious instead of God conscious. He's conscious to the need of his brethren, and his brother did need some help. Yeah, it'd be good. But he needed to be conscious with God and his will. Uh, sometimes we're a man conscious. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. He, had a, he understood. We talked about him this morning, man, when he got knocked off the horse or, or when he got, saw that light and was blinded and all that. Man, I'll tell you, he, he put God first, and that's what we need to do. Acts chapter 20, verse 23 and 24 so I say that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and affliction abide me, but none of these things move me. This is Paul talking now. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. You remember when he got to the end of his life, he could say that, couldn't he? He said, I've, I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Therefore, it is laid up for me a crown of life, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give. And not to me only, but others too. And so on. And so on. He did. He did what he said there. He said he was going to do it. Bonds and afflictions and everything else. Uh, Moses lost his sense of God. I, I think sometimes we've lost our sense of God. And we may be praying to him. We may be reading about him in the scripture. But uh, I think we need to put him back. The Bible says that he might have the preeminence. That's what's needed is here is the preeminence. Not called to commit yourself to a need. You're not called to commit yourself to a job or to a work. Not at all. Not to a field. You're to commit yourself to God. The Bible says he's the Lord of the harvest. We preached on that recently, didn't we? And said, pray you the Lord of the harvest. He'll send forth laborers. I'm praying for laborers in the harvest. But he's the Lord of the harvest. We better keep our eyes on him. Better keep our eyes on him. He's the head of the body. And he's uh, gloriously competent to take care of his work, his work. You and I, I mean, you, you, you hear preachers preach of the need, and there is a need. There's no doubt about the task. Be committed to the need. There's a thousand needs, but you've got to be committed to Christ. See, Paul was committed to Christ. That was the difference in him. That's why he was so, uh, we'll call it successful, but so amazingly, he was able to do things that nobody else could do. Moses let the need get between him and God, and you can't. Let the need. There are people that need to be saved. There are people that need to be in the church that need to be full. No doubt about it. There's plenty of need. But we don't need promotions to build a church, folks. What we need is to be controlled by God. That's, that's, that's where we're at. Uh, we do a lot of promotions, don't we? You know, that head, all I need to do, that head, see that hand there, just, just supposed to be restful there. And as soon as my head wants that finger to move or that finger to move or that thumb to move, just, that's the way we're to obey the Lord. Just be restful. Don't be worried about stuff. Don't be worried about the church going to close or this is going to close. I keep running into other churches that are worse shape than we are, smaller than we are. No, no. Get your eyes on the Lord. Moses got his off of God and it cost him. Don't need promotions. Need to be controlled by God. Just availability. That, that hand is right there, and as soon as I want it, I can just tell. The head can tell it what to do, and that's, that's the Lord Jesus is the head. He's the head of the church. And a lot of times we hear, uh, give more, do more, go, 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 and all these things that we... The uh, Bible says in Psalm 46.10, listen, you might want to mark this one. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. But we don't want to get still. We got so much going, our brain's going so much, you got to have something all the time. Some people, if they didn't have a TV or something going, they just go crazy or something, you know. Radio or something. I like a little quiet once in a while myself. I don't know about you. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with those things. They're good things. And I listen to them. I uh, don't watch much TV anymore, but Anyway, I listen to a little radio, Christian. But I want to tell you something. We need to just be still. Get real still. Let God speak to your heart. 
Get, get off somewhere. Get in that. That's why he called it a closet, you know. You get in a closet, ain't nobody in there with you. Just get in there and close the door. Well, get somewhere where you can be alone with God. And, and, and the best of intentions, listen, with the best of intentions, Moses became a murderer instead of a missionary. The fact of the matter is, he couldn't even bury one. They found out about it, didn't they? You know, a little later on, God buried the whole mess in the Red Sea. Amen. Every one of them. The Bible says there was not one left. God is perfectly competent. But he's looking for a man or a woman, us, that would just be like that hand, just be when the head tells it to do something. That's what Paul did. And he does it. Oh, my friend. Moses tried to do God's work man's way, and you can't do it that way. I remember what was the brother that lived right behind us, Bobby. I've forgotten his name now. Anyways, he's with the Lord now. He'd come up and help us when we were building this church. And that's what he'd say. Every time he'd come up here, he'd say, Preacher, you can't do it that way. <laughs> we were doing everything wrong. <laughs> we never did anything right. We had to redo it <laughs> every time. But he kept us out of trouble. Kept us out of trouble. Oh, that's what we need to remember. You can't do it that way. You can't do it man's way. God's way is not man's way. Well, the burning bush, chapter 3. Flip over to chapter 3 there. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro. He's, he's had to run for his life, and he's had to go away, away from where he's at in Egypt. And uh, he, he kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to horror. Boy, God was in that, wasn't he? And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Isn't that something? Moses burned out in a minute, just in a minute. You know, that bush could have burned out in a minute, but it, but it was lit by God, and God was in it. And if God's in it, it don't have to, it would never have burned out if God had wanted it to keep burning like that. And Moses asked a very important question. Look at verse 3. He said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burning? I mean, bushes would catch on fire all the time. It's called, uh, kind of like you and I, uh, cowboys call tumbleweed and stuff, just old stuff like that. It, that hot sun, sometimes they just catch on fire and just burn up, be gone in a minute. But he kept watching and kept watching and kept watching. Didn't burn up. Hmm. Let me go see what, what's, what's, what's keeping that thing going. And so... Uh, a lot of times we, we have to remember, we, we become fans. I don't know if you're a football fan or a basketball fan or whatever, <laughs> people are fans. You know, what that trickles over into the Christian life too sometimes. And we have fans. We look at preachers and they have great abilities sometimes and you know, so ability to really dig down at some of them preachers, they amaze me to just reach down in there and get things out I've never seen and I love to hear them. They're great men of God, but uh, the Christian can't look to them and do God's work. You're going to fail. These men are not God's favorites. I remember when I was first saved, I know this happened at least three times. I'm a little slow. I'm, I'm kind of dumb, you know. I don't, I don't pick it up too quick, you know. I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box, as they say, and so on. But nonetheless, uh, I'd read a book, somebody would have a great move of God somewhere, and, and they'd write a book on it, and I'd buy the book, and I'd say, man, that's great, that's what I need to do. Boy, I'd start trying to do that. Didn't work for me. I did that a second time at least, I think maybe three, but two or three times. And I'd buy the book. I was making them rich with the books, you know, I was buying their books. <laughs> it was pretty good for them. And then I found out God don't make two snowflakes alike. So what God did for them, it didn't mean he's going to do it for me if I bought their book and tried what they were doing. No. I need to get with God and find out what God wants me to do. And I was amazed at what God could do when I found out what, just try to follow him. I went into evangelism for a while and man, was, I didn't know people in other states and other places, but I got meetings. I mean, God, God will do that, you know. I preached in Ohio. I preached in Georgia. I preached in 
South Carolina, North Carolina, all over the place. And I'll tell you something. God's well capable to get you meetings. You don't have to beg people for meetings. And I, I don't like to see evangelists trying to get meetings. Just wait on God and he'll give you a meeting or he'll give you whatever you need. Moses burned out in a moment. In a moment. And we don't need to be fans. We don't need, you listen, we're going to be failures if we do what Moses did. Don't do it like God said. You see, God had a different plan for Moses. I can tell you right now, and you know right now, what Moses did. Wasn't it? Nobody else did what Moses did once he got in the place where God could use him. But he began by being a failure. Do you know Abraham began by being a failure? It's a good place to be. You just fall flat on your face. God likes to see fall flat on your face so that you'll turn to him and, and call on him and expect him to help you. And we don't. When, we're, when, we, when we can do it, ourselves, man, I can do that. I mean, you, you just hold off on this God. I got this one, you know. Yeah, yeah. You ain't got nothing, neither have I. David, Isaiah, all the rest of them, they were failures before they, before they were really used of God. You see, there's nothing to substitute for God. Nothing. A lot of people drift today and don't have the power of God. I don't think any of us have the power of God like he wants us to have. Like they had in the book of Acts. Yeah, I believe he wants that again. Not, not the exact same thing, but something great, something mighty. The reason is people have never taken time to find out why God uses men. And we need to find that out. You ever turn to see? That's what, why is this bush burning? That's what Moses said. That's what he said. Why, why is it? Huh? Oh. I'm going to tell you something. The God of the burning bush, look at verse 5. And he said, draw nigh hither. Pull off the shoes from thy feet. For well, the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Now he's getting ready to find out what God, this is God showing up. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. You better be afraid to look upon God. Tell you something. Uh, he's, he's not just our, he is our best friend in the sense of the word, and the scripture says that, but we better not treat him like some neighbor down the street or something. You better remember he's God. God had something to say to Moses. And probably went something like this. <laughs> you know, you, you, you thought this is a special bush. You look at that bush. You thought this was, but God probably said, I could have used that old scruffy, scrubby, straggly thing over there. I could have used this pretty bush over here. I could have, it's not the bush, it's the God of the bush. We need to get a hold of that today. You want the church to grow, we've got to have the God of the bush. We've got to have his, not promotions, not, not the preacher sitting on top of the roof eating Kentucky Fried Chicken because we've made her gold or something. Silly stuff. People are doing silly stuff. Oh, Moses thought it was a special bush. Well, any bush would have done. I could have used any bush. I can hear him saying to Moses now. Just have to have God in the bush. That's what made it burn. It was God in the bush. It could have burned forever. It could have still been burning today had God wanted it to. All my friend. Moses thought he was some bush. Man, he'd been trained. He'd been, he, had all, he had the best of everything. He, no, no, that's not going to get it. You've got to have God. He burned out one day. He, be, he became a heap of ashes for 40 years. Not being able to be used of God. Oh, I'm telling you, this bush, you're looking at that bush and it's burning, but it could have burned out in a few minutes too. But God hadn't been there. You see, it just wouldn't have lasted long. What we need to do, folks, listen, and this is very important. Present yourself to God for what you are and what I am. Nothing. And present herself to the God, and he is the God of everything, by the way. He can do anything. It said over in Jeremiah, I'm God. Is anything too hard for me? Can you imagine that? Said in the New Testament, he can do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or even think. You can't think anything. And I can think pretty wild. Boy, I can think some wild things. Boy, it'd be great for God to do this and just something. No, he can do more than that. He can part water. And he can make the rock give up its water. All the different things. Man, I'll tell you something. 
not the bush. It's the God of the bush. Let's learn that. Any old bush will do. Does that, that speak to your heart? God can use you. God can use me in any old bush. We don't have to be Joe Arthur. We don't have to be a great uh, expositor. God can use us. We read about Philip here this morning in the scriptures. And he not only won a fellow to the Lord and baptized him there, but he, he, he got into time travel. He got, he got to move from one place to the other without even, he didn't even need his car. He didn't have a car. Just present yourself what you are, nothing, and, and, and for him to fill you with what he is, and that's everything. He's the great I am. And he, sometimes we, we use that phrase, Ebenezer, you know, uh, they put up at Ebenezer stone, and that's where the Lord had helped them. They were looking back. And sometimes they're looking into the future and they say, well, I'm looking for Maranatha. Maranatha means the Lord is coming. So they look into the past, look into the future. But God says, I am. I'm the great I am today. God wants to use me today. God wants to use you today. And tomorrow morning when you get up, he wants to use you again. Oh, that's what we need to realize. You're born again. You need what you have, and what you have is what he is. What he is. He does not give you strength. He is your strength. And I have to learn that over and over and over again. Anybody else have to learn that? <laughs> huh? A lot of times we ask for healing. But he is our healer. He's what we need. It's not that you need the healing. You need the healer. You need the strength giver. You need the great I am. I need the great I am. And if a revival comes to Balfour or any place else around here, when we have one scheduled for the fall, if it really comes, it'll come because God is here. He does not give us strength. He is our strength. He does not give us victory. He is our victory. And we've got to remember that. Uh, I've heard preachers say this so often, and I cringe when I hear them say it. Uh, boy, if I couldn't preach, I'd go crazy. I'd go stark raving mad. Why? 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 How many of you remember John on the Isle of Patmos? You remember Revelation there? John's out there by himself. And he wasn't screaming, pulling his hair out. I can't pull mine. <laughs> it's too, too short. He wasn't pulling his hair. He wasn't saying, I'm going to go crazy. I got nobody to preach to. You know what he did? The Bible says on the Lord's day, he just got out there with Jesus. Him and Jesus had a big time. It was all about God with him. That's what we're talking about today. It's all about God. And you and I can have, I don't care what you're facing tomorrow. You can have a glorious day if God's in it. And he wants to be in it, could I tell you? More than I want him in it, and you want him in it a lot of times. If God doesn't supply the need here, we, 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 we just have to close the church up. And I hope that never happens. I pray it'll never happen. I'm asking God that it might be for his glory to keep this thing going until Jesus comes. But if he does, I want to tell you, John didn't go crazy. And we won't go crazy. We'll just keep on something. We'll do something for Jesus. The preaching shouldn't be above the Lord. Must be the Lord first. He has the preeminence we mentioned a while ago. The teaching's not about the word. On and on, whatever you want, whatever you want to throw in there. If God is where He is in your life, it won't matter what you do, it won't matter where you're at. You will be happy if Jesus is there in His right place. Now, a lot of times He's in your heart. But a lot of times we're not where we ought to be. Sometimes we're like Moses here. We're out killing somebody and trying to bury them in the sand. We're out trying to doing something in the flesh or doing something. Listen, we've got to come to God and pray and beg God for power. That's what we need in this day is power. I mentioned somebody the other day. That's exactly what's missing is the conviction of God. I could preach to I'm blue in the face, but if there's no conviction of people, even the people of God, people that are saved, need to come under conviction and, and get in the altar once in a while or get things right once in a while, some summer. And then people that come in here need to get under conviction, get saved, or people that we're talking to out in the world day by day. Well, why aren't they getting saved like they used to, by the way? They used to. I've got books back here with people getting saved. 
and getting baptized, what happened? Oh my. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. That's Paul. That's why he was so successful. He learned whatever happens. <clears throat> they threw him in jail and make a difference. They beat him up, and they did. But Paul just said, I'm happy in whatever state the Lord, it's the Lord. Didn't, didn't the Lord say, didn't the Bible say over in the book of Psalms that he orders our steps? I believe it does. He orders our steps. Sometimes we don't like the order. <laughs> huh? Sometimes we don't like the order. I think I'll just stop here a minute and testify. Can I testify? I can't get nobody to testify no more. I'm just going to testify. A few days ago, I went over to Bay Breeze. Anybody ever been to Bay Breeze? Fish place. I want some fish. I want get some fish. And I like it personally when... You pick that tater up, you know, you got to take the wrapping off of it. You know, you don't get any aluminum foil down your throat. And it burns you. I picked that tater up, it was barely warm. I said, I think I'll be good. I felt that fish and it was barely warm. I like it hot. Don't you like it hot? You know what I did grumbled, murmured in my heart. I didn't talk, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I got to the house and sat down. I still grumbled. <laughs> I just wasn't like it all to me, you know. If it had been hot, it had been better. God said this, some people over and hate to eat and dirt. And God had me crying a few minutes. He was wearing me out. You ever been to the woodshed? <laughs> and that wasn't bad enough. And God got through with that. He wasn't through. He said, and about that lie you told. Hmm? What did they ask you when you get to the restaurant? Was everything all right? Uh-huh. About that lie you told. You said everything's all right. You didn't want to start a fight. Boy, how easy, huh? How easy we just get out of having God as number one. Hmm? And he whooped me a while. I cried a while longer. Amen. <laughs> Woo! But it's good when you get it over with. And that stinging quits hurting. Huh? You ever had a whip? <laughs> no, raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And God can know, he knows how to take you to the woodshed, boy. We've got so much. We've got so much, it's a danger. Moses had so much. Man, he had it all. Raised and he didn't do without anything. Oh, my friend. It's not about anything but God. This church is here because God put it here. God let us build it. God gave us the strength and the energy and the money. God did it all. Whatever state you're in, learn to be content with it if it's a cold tater. Amen. <laughs> if it's a cold piece of fish, you remember some people are starving today. Some people would love to have a cold piece of fish. Be better than dirt. Two missionaries were murdered over there in Haiti recently. Young couple in their 20s. Dear God. Try to serve God. Oh, that that work might go on. The gangs are, are taking over. They're already taking over. They shot and killed both. No reason. Pray for that work over there. And people are starving. Oh, Christ is in you. If you're saved by grace through faith, he's in you. And you don't need more, but you can't do with less. You need him. I need him. It's all about him, isn't it? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We, I hope you have it memorized. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What a mouthful. The Spirit of God spoke when he said that. Only problem is, we've got to remember this. Any old bush will do. You see, you, you'll do. I'll do. But we have to have God. We know good without God. That, 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 that rod don't become a snake without God. <laughs> Moses, you remember, he put his hand in his bosom, he come out of leprous, and they put it in again. It don't work without God. The, 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 the river don't turn to blood without God. And on and on you can go. Oh, my friend, here's what I'm trying to say today. Any old bush will do. He, he can use you. He can use me, any of us. But God must be in the bush. You say, well, I'm saved. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where, where is he in the bush? <laughs> Have you learned to be content? whatever you're going through if it's a cold piece of fish or a cold baked potato <laughs> have you learned to be content with it or do you murmur a little bit yep afraid I'm guilty but God forgave me for it and I got it straight so hallelujah oh my friend if you don't know Jesus if you're watching you don't know Jesus as your savior let me tell you he promises that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Or whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just simply asking Jesus into your heart, you could be gloriously saved today. Gloriously saved. And he'll come in to live with you and make you a new creation, a new, new creature in Christ Jesus. Oh, my friend, he wants to do that. We're going to play an invitation to him in just a moment. And if you have a need, even right where you're at, or anybody here for that matter, we don't know anybody's heart, but, but nonetheless, we know people are watching and need to be saved.